Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Michael Stevenson. I am the uh, Regional Director General for Transport Canada here in the Ontario region. I'm going to uh, go through a number of slides here, and uh, with Carly's assistance, we'll, we'll get through them. I'm going to touch on a number of things uh, for all of you. Uh, I'm going to touch a bit on just a very touch on our, our mission of the department. Uh, I want to take, talk a little bit about Transport Canada's role in, uh, in airports in general, and uh, we'll get to Billy Bishop specifically, of course. Um, I'll talk a little bit about runway extension uh, proposals or any type of construction proposal that you might see at an airport, and I'll talk about how the regulator would, would deal with that specific application should we see one. Uh, I'll touch on the tripartite agreement very briefly, uh, marine exclusion zones, and uh, I've also been asked to speak a little bit about the certification of the C-Series aircraft, which I can touch on for you. Thanks. So uh, we're a headquarters, uh, Ottawa headquartered operation uh, primarily, and uh, we are situated across the country in five separate regions. Uh, as you can see, uh, with the assistance of my uh, headquartered colleagues, we develop um, standards, policies, regulations, and that is the, uh, the structure that uh, uh, operators of airports or operators of airlines uh, operate within. So it's a simplistic statement, but I thought I'd just touch uh, with, uh, base with that one, Carl. The uh, role of the department, and this is with respect to uh, airports in general. Um, uh, in the case of, uh, of, of an airport that's looking to, to do any type of construction, uh, specifically, or any other type of certificate holder. Uh, we regulate uh, airlines, airports, uh, we regulate uh, manufacturers of aircraft, the designing of aircraft, uh, we regulate the training of, of the flight crews, the maintenance crews, all of the flight schools that would actually be uh, in the business of, of training any type of, uh, of uh, uh, staff that would work in, in the front end of an airplane or would work on an airplane. Uh, we would develop, or sorry, work with those particular uh, groups. We, uh, we are the licensing agency, similar to the MTO, where you get your driver's license. We're that, that section where we deal with literally tens of thousands of, of certificate holders in, the, in the, uh, the crew or the personnel licensing. Just to give you a little bit of a, a, of a, a flavor for what the department does as a whole. Um, the, with respect to Billy Bishop, uh, there's an anomaly for the department. We don't, we are not uh, the signatory to uh, other tripartite agreements. Uh, this is a, a one-off uh, with the Billy Bishop Airport. So there are three parties who have signed uh, onto that agreement: the City of Toronto, the uh, Toronto Port Authority, and uh, the Government of Canada. So that's just a, a little bit of an anomaly compared to other airports. I'll try not to get too technical here, but I would like just to give you an idea of should there be uh, a move forward to uh, with this particular project, uh, our involvement would be uh, specifically as the regulator, um, the airport operator, uh, as you know that's the Toronto Port Authority, uh, would submit to Transport Canada uh, a plan of construction operations. It's a term we use to describe uh, and to, to describe how the airport would in fact go ahead with a project. As you can imagine, a project could be very simple. Uh, it could be a, a change of a runway, uh, uh, sorry, a change of a taxiway, for example, or it could be, in this case, a runway extension. It could be the construction of an entirely uh, brand new runway or a brand new taxiway. So they're, they, the projects can be simple or complex. Uh, Chris did a good job of telling you generally what's being proposed. And in that particular uh, construction uh, plan, we're interested in how the airport would continue to operate while the construction was going on. And that's our interest, is safe operation of the airport. Linked to all airport operators is an, air, uh, uh, an airport operating manual. That's basically their uh, uh, agreement with Transport Canada in describing how they're going to do their business from one day to the next. Uh, should this particular project go forward, we'd be interested in the final product, the, fi uh, the amendment to that airport uh, operations manual, and, uh, and it would describe to us how they're going to continue to operate going forward. Uh, 
Uh, I touched very briefly on the tripartite agreement. Uh, Transport Canada is one of the signatories, as I, as I mentioned. Um, and uh, you'll hear this quite a bit this evening from uh, TPA, and uh, I'd just like to repeat it. Uh, changes to this airport, specifically to the covenants or the, uh, the promises or agreements within it, all three parties must agree. The city, uh, Transport Canada, and uh, or the government of Canada, and of course the Toronto Port Authority. So all three parties must agree, whether it be a runway extension or uh, um, the introduction of a jet aircraft, uh, or um, one's not coming up top of my head, uh, the agreements within it. Um, there is a noise, uh, a noise criteria that the airport also maintains. And again, that's clearly laid out in the tripartite agreement as another example. Marine exclusion zones, and again, Chris touched on that. Um, they are marked areas specifically to keep the airport, the aircraft, and the uh, particularly the high masted vessels separated. That's all they're they're there for. Uh, they're buoys in the water, and uh, they, these particular ones there were established by uh, the Toronto Port Authority in collaboration with Transport Canada. In other words. We, we, uh, we had a discussion about where they would be and whether they were suitable. Our interests are uh, meeting the, uh, the airport standards and keeping the, the aircraft, uh, uh, sorry, the, the vessels, the boats, away from the, uh, the approach path of both ends of the runway. Um, so they're the particular, the high, uh, high points of that particular one. Um, it's important that those remain in place to maintain certification of the of the particular runway. And the last slide I have here is about the C-Series aircraft, the Bomber J C-Series aircraft. Uh, certification of this particular aircraft is controlled by my headquarters colleagues from a regulator perspective in Ottawa. We have a, uh, a large uh, crew of uh, engineers who work directly with all aviation manufacturers, in this case Bomber J. It's currently underway. Some of you may know that they, they did their inaugural uh, flight, uh, um, test flight, uh, it's months and months ago now, and it's five or six months ago. And uh, those, uh, that series of flight testing continues. Uh, that's a very complex process uh, in that they need to determine uh, various things, how all the systems are functioning. Uh, they actually do a lot of work on the performance of the aircraft. They actually. Uh, through uh, through uh, computer modeling can determine length of runway required, but they actually physically do it in order to uh, to uh, approve uh, the uh, the aircraft performance. As an example, um, the, in, the the point I want to make here is that the certification process of this aircraft is to market it around the world. It's not intended to allow it to specifically fly on Billy Bishop. Okay. So, uh, so while the city has interest in that, and I, I certainly do appreciate that, it's important for you to realize the certification process is going to go on, uh, and uh, when they're completed the work, uh, the certification certificate will be given to the manufacturer, and they'll continue to market the aircraft for uh, airlines uh, who would purchase it. So, 